Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can add an authorization policy to our API. Now, what we're going to want to do first of all is come into our API project and inside the startup class, previously we had services.addAuthentication. What we're going to want to do is say services.addAuthorization. And this will give us an options callback like so. And inside here, we can say options dot add policy. And we can give this policy a, a name. I will simply call it API scope. And this then gives us a builder callback that we can use like so. And what we can do is we can say builder dot require authenticated user, which means that the application needs to have authenticated in order to call a, a protected endpoint with this policy. And then we can say builder dot require claim scope and then API like so. Now what this authorization policy essentially says is require that the user or application is authenticated and then require that they have a scope of API. Now the claims are essentially a list of uh, key value pairs in the JWT bearer token. And we're looking for a, a claim called scope, which is the standard uh, scope claim in an access token. And then we're expecting it to have a value of API at least. Now, if we come down to the bottom, you'll notice that by default, we have this use authorization already added for us. However, if you are missing that, then you'll need to add it in just below the app.use authentication, like so. Now what we can do is we can head into our weather forecast controller and we have this authorize attribute on the weather forecast controller class. And what we can do inside here is we can specify a policy name. Now this name here, API scope, should match exactly with the policy name that you defined in the startup class. If you don't uh, have them matching both the same, then this authorize attribute here won't know the which policy to apply essentially for authorization. So we've created a policy here called API scope, which requires that the user is authenticated and requires that there is an API scope present in the list of claims inside the bearer token. So what we can do now is register this API scope within identity server. So if we close both of these and head into our identity server project, inside the startup class, we have currently an empty list of API scopes. So what we can do here is we can say new API scope and we can give it a name of API, like so. So what this will do is create a new API scope called API and it's important that this name API matches the allowed value of the scope here in the startup of our uh, API project. As I say, API scope needs to match between startup and the uh, controller, and the API scope value needs to match between the startup here and the startup in identity server where we've named the scope. So, what we can do now, if we run the identity server, give it a few moments to uh, build the application. Again, it will launch to this uh, 404 not found. However, we can go to well-known OpenID configuration and you'll notice that we have a scopes supported property. And you can see inside here, we have our API scope. So we can, we can see that that has uh, worked successfully and we have this API scope now registered within our identity server, which means that this scope is ready to be used by client applications in order to gain access to any endpoints that we protect with this API scope policy. Now for the purposes of this demonstration, I simply used a single scope called API to protect all of the endpoints within this API project. However, you might have uh, more fine grained scopes for example, you might have a read scope, you might have a write scope, or you might have read and write scopes per entity type. For example, users read, products write, etc. so on and so forth. Again, that will all depend on your requirements. 
In order to add multiple uh, scopes, you could simply add multiple policies. So where we've currently got a policy called API scope, you might have another policy called read scope, another policy called write scope. And then all you would do is give these unique names and then reference them from within the appropriate controllers inside the authorized attribute policy name. So that's showing you how you can set up authorization within your web API. I hope you found this useful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.